Hello everyone, welcome to William in the Magic Box. Today on our show, we're going to have Carol. Carol is from England in the UK. So let's see what Carol has to say. Enjoy the interview. So hello, Carol, how are you? Hello. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Very well, thanks so much for taking the time this evening. Thank you. You're welcome. So tell me, how's your day today? Tell me a little bit about your day. So I have been puttering today, William. I've been trying to do some gardening, doing a bit of shopping. I've got no furniture in my house at the moment because I've got rid of it all because I'm having new stuff. So right. I'll probably sound a bit echoey. <laughs> Love it. Sound, sounds perfect. <laughs> so tell me, where are you from, Carol? I was originally born in Birmingham, okay, which is um, the middle of uh, England, but mm -hmm. I moved to Tamworth, which is about half an hour outside of Birmingham in 1979. Wow. <laughs> was that before you were born? <laughs> no, no, no. I was born after. <laughs> <laughs> and tell, but to your family, uh, do you still have some family living in Birmingham or not? I've got family in, um, I've got one brother who lives in Birmingham, yeah. and then I've got two sisters that live in villages to the um, south of Birmingham, and and then I've got a sister that lives up in Lancaster. I see. And I recently lost my other brother who used to live up in Lancaster as well. Oh, sorry to hear that. That's okay. I see. And what do you do for work for living, Carol? I have just retired. My God, congratulations. <laughs> so I was a mental health nurse for 38 years. Oh, wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, you, you know, uh, Carol, I was having an interview yesterday with um, with a lovely man. Um, you know, he's suffering now with uh, mental health issues. And I was telling him that, uh, you know, like that growing up or, you know, maybe 10 years ago, I never heard before the word mental health. I think before it wasn't, you know, people, they it wasn't very open. People didn't talk no. about it. You know, you know what I mean? Nowadays, with social media, after the COVID, I think now is a topic that everyone talks about. It's something that, you know, there is a big awareness about it and uh, mental health as well. So walk me for a little bit about your career, um, how everything started. Well, my mother was a mental health nurse. Mm -hmm. So she, st she started nursing in the 50s um, and she worked in, in a a psychiatric hospital in Birmingham. Um, I'm one of six, so she would work nights and dad would work days, and that's how they would support us. Wow. Um, and she was such an inspiration because despite of all of that, she progressed in her career and became very... Um, she was a wonderful mental health nurse and Myself and one of my other sisters was also a mental health nurse. And then my youngest sister was um, works with people with special needs and also looks at their mental health. So I suppose mum was the inspiration. And um, after I'd had my three children and I was divorced, so I was bringing them up. My mum said to me, you should retrain, you know, go, go into your psychic, your mental health nursing. So that's what I did. Wow, amazing. And your career was for 38 years, you said. Yeah. My God, I'm sure you have a lot of stories to tell, a lot of, um, you know, oh, events God. in your life, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carol, so during the interview, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and also about your point of views, okay? Okay. So before we start our journey, we in the magic box. I would like you to tell me something interesting about yourself or maybe something that not many people know about you. Um, well, it's difficult because I'm such an open person. It's very difficult. I'll tell everybody everything. Um, um, 
many people know that I used to be a singer, a semi-professional wow. singer. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> and I used to sing in just little pubs and clubs around oh. to back in music. And I was in a duet once. I duetted with a, a chap called Errol for a few years. And then I did it on my own. And then I stopped. Because <laughs> oh. it all so, got a bit much. So nowadays you don't sing anymore. You don't practice anymore the singing. I sing all the time, all day long. Wow. I'm always singing. Um, we love singing in our family. It's If you give it's us a microphone... You won't get it back. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be there for a long while. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories yeah. of life? Point of views? Yeah. Yeah. And then saying, welcome to William in the magic box. Oh, so I've yeah. got him a best friend. the fun questions okay i'm just gonna play a song now just for us to relax a bit before the first question okay okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's do it right so before we start the game carol during the the join if it comes up a question that you don't want to talk about some reason you don't want to answer always can't change okay okay right first question for you is how would you describe a perfect friendship Oh, I have a friend who lives next door to me. Mm -hmm. And we've been friends for 30 odd years, and I'm Zan. Wow. Um, and over the last 15 years, we've become close, very close. She's my age too. Uh -huh. But I think the perfect friendship is never to judge. Mm -hmm. Always keep us the secrets that people tell you and trusted you with mm. and to just be able to cry together, laugh together, sing together and where the, the trust is just complete. I have, all, as I've said, I've got three, uh, four living siblings now and mm. they are also my best friends. Oh. Wow. And my three children are my absolute best friends. Oh, sweet. So um, tell me what's the biggest similarity between you and your neighbor, your best friends, and the biggest difference between both of you? Okay. The biggest similarity is that we like to have a drink together on a Saturday night. We'll get the karaoke going and we'll be outrageous till about two in the three o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. The biggest difference is is how we view um how can I put the world? Okay. So Anne can be a little bit naive to the world, is the you know, whereas I'm a bit more streetwise. I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see her watching this interview right now and go like, mm, it's completely right. Or maybe... Mm. <laughs> oh, she'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Hey, Carol. Next question for you is, what keeps you up at night? Um, to be honest, nothing keeps me up at night, but it will... Because I, I try and, being a mental health nurse, I've learned to cope with putting things away into enable you to sleep. So using some sort of um, meditation, if you like, mm -hmm. to take me out of the day's traumas or worries, you know, normally have to do with patients that I dealt with. Um, I do worry about the world, William. Mm -hmm. I worry about... I worry about everything to do with the world and and that would keep me awake forever. So I have to meditate. Yeah, the world worries me. 
Do you consider yourself to be more of a day person or a evening person? Morning Sorry, person? Oh, I'm a, I'm a morning person, definitely. Always been? Sorry? Always been? Always been a morning person. I'm really annoying in the morning. I wake up and I'm happy and full of life and want to talk to everyone and everyone else is like, no. <laughs> I live alone now, so it's not a problem. <laughs> oh. Amazing. But it used to annoy them. It's to annoy the kids. <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. Before the next question, Carol, of course, you know, you got connected through Stuart, yeah, your lovely son. And um, he he mentioned a lot during the interview about how close, uh, you know, your family is. You know, he, he feels very close, very supportive, always have this, you know, big bond between everyone. So tell Absolutely. me, your, tell me in your opinion, why is that? Why is, is the way you've been raised something connected with your parents? Or uh, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, through your eyes, this connection that your closest family have. So I've always been one of six mm -hmm. children. And regardless of how tough life was, we knew we were loved. We would, you know, and I think as long as a child knows it's love, it can deal with anything. So my mother was one of nine. Wow. And they were all close. So there was a lot of, there's still a lot of cousins. And um, I wanted, and all of us wanted to keep that love alive. We, we all feel that as you bring the next generation up, Nothing's perfect in the world. There's always going to be trials and tribulations. But if you're loved by someone, you feel confident enough to be able to talk about what's bothering you. So I would say Stuart's closest to his two sisters, as he said in his interview, the three amigos I used to call them. Uh -huh. And I made sure that they felt love. They were loved by their grandparents. They were loved by their... So although me and their father split up, we decided that we would not be bitter. We mm -hmm. wanted the children to be fine. Amazing. And people find it difficult to understand that I like my ex-husband's wife and the children they've gone to have. So we're still a blended <laughs> family, if you like. I love that. And I, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, uh, something is not working, just finish. But actually, it's... it's it worked well because for it to be worked so many years, you yeah. know, it did work and it's a different journey now. And why not to, you know, to be part of it somehow? Why to yeah. keep distance? You know what I mean? Somehow, as you said, there is some bonds, there is children involved there, you know what I mean? So why not? I know it's not easy for sure, but if it can happen, why not? Yeah. And growing up for you, um, which person you are uh, more close to in your family? Oh, so at different times, when you're one of six, at different times, you are closer to a sibling just because of the logistics of life. Yeah. So the older sister, if I don't mention their names, I'll be in trouble, William. So the older sister is Marie. She is the trailblazer and was the trailblazer for us all. And she's really outgoing and funny and glamorous and fabulous wow <laughs> <laughs> then my brother john who's just recently died was such a character he was um he was a darling he was a bachelor boy and lived his life his own way then there's me then i've got my next sister down denise who well, is very um into a craft and she does beautiful porcelain wow then I've got my brother, Peter, who's hilarious. And then the youngest one, Kathy, who lives in Morecambe. So at different times, I've been close to each one of them. At the moment, I'd say we're all struggling and supporting each other with the loss of John. Of course, of course. Tell me which one of your siblings was the last one that you talked to? Um, well, I talk to the girls every day on WhatsApp. So we've, we've got a WhatsApp group. <laughs> Cheeky. 
So love all it. four of us say good, uh, say good morning every morning. Aww. Send them love. So That's... all four, all three of them actually. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, next question for you is, who was your first crush and why? Oh, my first crush was, um, you. <laughs> I'd say Elvis Presley. Really? <laughs> that was my first celebrity crush. My first real love was my ex-husband. I was only 14 when we met, so. Very young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, since then, I've had lots of crushes. <laughs> <laughs> good, very good. <laughs> and do you still do you still like Elvis Presley? Do you still uh, follow his career, or no? It was just like a moment in your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Um, my friend at the time, Teresa, we and well, she's still my friend even all these years later. Um, we went to every film. You know, we had these films on, and we'd go and watch them at the the local cinema and at the, in those days you could go in and watch the film as many times as you liked so in a week I think we watched That's the Way It Is by Elvis probably about 50 times oh my god that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> I had his pictures all over my wall I loved his music and oh. my, my my dad was a my parents loved music so we could each choose what music we wanted to play on a Sunday morning wow so, all get a go but then I think it's uh, then I just changed and went to real soul and disco and I was proper into all of that um not realizing William that the uh, it was coming from the gay culture right when I was when I, you know I've learned a lot obviously having a gay son I've learned a lot since but I always remember hearing Sylvester's Mighty Wheel and thinking, wow, what is this? And just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I think music always leaves memories in your, our lives. Yes. You know, different yeah. parts, different occasions, sometimes sadness as well, but somehow it's part of our lives. It brings us this comfort somehow, comfort. Absolutely. I love that. If yeah. I could have music in my life, I, I would, I just wouldn't exist properly. The same here, the same. I live mm -hmm. by music, you know. Yeah. It's for me, you know, not to have music on. And and somehow makes you feel grateful as well about life. You know, when those music come along and you go like, oh my God, that's bring me to such a great memories. And you feel grateful yeah. about it. Yeah, cool. Next question. Okay, Carol, next question, please. Oh. This is my my favorite question of the mask box, and it came up to you. Right. Send away a message to someone, but you don't need to tell who this message is for. Just the person who is watching right now, this person is going to go, okay, I'm sure it's for me, this message. Be brave. Put your big boy pants on. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Carol, when I was checking your profile, you know, I could see, uh, you know, I could feel your happiness. I could feel your positivity through your pictures. And actually, there was a phrase there saying, be happy as you can be every day. Yeah. Tell me, what's the meaning of happiness for you? Uh, tell me, um, you know, uh, your approach to happiness, what that means for you. Okay. So what I always say, there's a couple of sayings that I say is, Firstly, it's better to regret something you've done than to regret not having done it. Yeah. So take the risk. Be your authentic self, no matter how it might affect, you know, appear to other people. I don't change who I am. And the children will tell you that they find me funny at times because say they give me a compliment, they'll say, oh, you look nice in that. I go, I oh, know, it's lovely, isn't it? And they go, oh, my goodness. Me. <laughs> so it's just, just try and be kind. If you can't be kind, then, then don't do anything, you know, be kind. Yeah. And I just try, I just, I have had a lot of sadness in my life, but I, you know, but I don't look back. Mm -hmm. I've always been a future looking person. So I can't change the past. So what can I do to make my future better? 
Absolutely. And when you think about yourself, when you analyze yourself, what's the biggest joy of being Carol? What do you like the most about being you? Um, my proudest achievement is the children. So the way they've grown into the most amazing adults, William, and, you know, they, they bring joy to whoever they are around. Um, so it's... I suppose the thing I like about being me is that I've, I'm proud of my career. I'm proud of bringing up my children. I like myself. I don't mind myself. I've lived by, on my own for a very long time and mm -hmm. I'm not prepared to compromise. So people will say, well, the, what, why aren't you with somebody? And I go, because I don't want to be. I'm, I've done all this by myself. So unless someone can enhance my life, yeah, I'm fine. Absolutely. <laughs> I think if, if meant to happen, it will happen. I think the most you chase never happens. It's better for you to, as you said, live your life the way you feel happy. And if you come along, okay. If not, okay yeah. as well. But you've got to take on a big family, a big Absolutely. personality. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Ready for another question? Yeah. Let's do it. Next one. Before the next question, Carol, tell me, um, you know, when you think about your career, yeah, through all those years, what was the biggest joy of it? What did you like the most about it? And the flip side, when you look back, what's the, what was the most challenging part for you? Okay. So, over the years, my speciality has turned into diagnosing and working for people who have dementia, but with very complex behaviours behind that. So it's not just that they're forgetful, but they might be becoming aggressive to their wife that they've loved all their life. They don't know who their children are anymore. They're frightened and all of that. And walking in, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a home where everything, everyone's crying, they don't know what to do. And by the end of my involvement, it's all sorted out. Amazing. things are sorted and that will always and then you get letters from them saying you know how much they appreciate your input wow um that's been that will always be my joy of my career that i did a good job the yeah. flip side is that sometimes no matter how much good, a good job you do there will always be some families that it's never good enough I see. So when you've given your all and they're still not happy, that can be something that hurts your heart. And for you, you know, dealing with those energy, those cases that sometimes, of course, for you sometimes could be, it was difficult, was hard, and somehow, um, you know, give some impact in your personal life. How did you manage to kind of sometimes to protect yourself, not take that to your personal life, if you know what I mean? So any mental health nurse will tell you, you need supervision. You need a debrief, if you like. So you go to someone, whoever that person is. So you can have your manager um, or someone and just you offload and you talk and you say, could I have done something better? Is there anything else that, but you have to do that. You have to be open and talk and offload. Otherwise you will not, be able to let go of things it takes skill and it takes practice and you have to acknowledge that you can't fix everything sometimes there's not there are certain things that nothing's going to fix and you've tried your absolute best but something's you know and you have to just say okay but so long as i know i tried my best i see okay Next question for you is, is that a dream you always had? Oh, I think I'm going to start living my dream. So it was always that I'd have some time and some money to go and do things that I want to do. So I've started an art course and I've booked some travel wow. and, and help, you know, just help some people I can help and, and so, yeah, I am starting to 
to do that because I've been working for so long and raising a family. You don't have time for yourself. So it's my time now, William. Got that um, world. Is, <laughs> good, very good. <laughs> do you feel like you are living your best life right now, Carol? Yes. I keep telling everyone I'm living my best life. Oh, <laughs> it's sweet. a privilege to get to, to 65. I'm 65. So it's a privilege to get to that age. And I want to, I don't want to waste a minute now. Wow. It's so interesting because, you know, uh, I was checking your profile and I could see that you, your birthday was not long ago and you're having the best time of your life. And I was like, <laughs> my God, that's what it's about. It's for you to yeah. live best every day. It, it's so visible, uh, you know, in your pictures and uh, look at it. It's like, my God, that's that's amazing. Great to see. Oh, Good. <laughs> Three questions left. Let's do it. Okay. Right. Next question for you is... When was the last time that you cried and why? Yesterday. Can you share why? Yes. As I said, um, my brother's just recently passed and it's very recent. So it's literally the last few weeks. So um, there are... I can't... I lost my parents 13 years ago and that was bad, but losing him we're all saying it's different. It's, and so you have waves and you have times where you cry. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm still grieving for him. So that was the reason really, oh. you know. When you, when you think about him, um, what's the, 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 the first memory that comes to your mind that makes you feel happy about it? There's a lot of happy memories with him, but I think when we were little, we used to all, um, get into trouble together. It was never just one, it was all six of us uh -huh. together. And we would giggle together and and we would never tell on each other. So if we'd done something wrong, we'd all get punished. Um, <laughs> there's, but there's, there's so many memories of him. And we've all, again, all six of us have got different memories, but I was talking to my, my kids have got memories of their uncle John uh -huh. and he would, you know, he loved them and they loved him. And so, oh. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just, it was a character. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> he left, for sure he left his mark, you know, in your, in yeah. your lives. And I think those loved ones, they go and, uh, but I think what counts now is the memories. It takes time, as you said, for you to grieve, yeah. to understand. But uh, I'm sure, you know, when you think about him, it's going to bring a lot of smile and uh, good memories and as well. And it's okay to sure. cry, you know, because I also we laugh about Absolutely. him as well, you know. Totally. Yeah. Cry is a good thing, it's a beautiful thing as well, you know, yeah. and um, you need to be brave sometimes to let it go, let it cry, and why not? I think it's part of the, the journey as well. Yeah. <laughs> Two questions left. Let's do it. Before the next question, um, of course, um, you mentioned about, um, you know, I can see your love for your kids and also uh, being uh, a mom of a gay a gay son, yeah? Two, que two parts of the two questions in one. The first part of the question is, uh, for you, um, you know, when you realized, when you find out, how, for you, how did you feel about it, like genuinely? How for you was a surprise or you felt like, okay, there is something that you need to work on or to, to understand more? And the other part of the question is, um, what's the biggest joy of being a mom overall? Okay. So when I was watching Stuart's talk with you, and he said, I don't I don't know whether mom knew. I knew. I told him, I told him, I said, <laughs> I think, remember, I, don't, I told him, I think she knew it. <laughs> and the reason, it's not that he was, it's not what you would think really, but it was very, he's always been a really attractive guy and lots of girls were attracted to him but he wasn't really attracted that way and yes he had his first poster on his wall was uh, Gillian Anderson and he had her on the wall for years right. and then she was replaced by Rachel Stevens and then Beyonce but there was just little things and I was thinking well I don't know whether you're interested in girls that much he was never into sport he was never into you know, what they call male things. Yeah. He loved being with his sisters. He was, it, it was, so I think he was about 16 and I thought, I think he's 
Stephanie Guy. Uh huh. But I didn't understand about the different types of gay people. Absolutely, yeah. So I didn't. Anyway, he went away to university and, and he did, he just sent me a text and said, um, I'm just going to let you know I'm gay. And I went, I texted him straight back and went, no surprise there, son. Um, <laughs> and I did say, I said, as long as you don't nick me on bag, we'll be fine. You know, just to make it a little bit, but it was a big deal for him. So I wanted to make it norm normalise it for him. And it, it's a shame that you still have to declare that you're gay. I don't have to declare that I'm straight every five minutes. Absolutely. But then I, so regarding what I needed to learn, I needed to learn a lot. However, I was alive during the 80s the and as an adult and the, the AIDS crisis and all of that. So mm -hmm. I, I remember looking at that thinking, Plus, William, I've got older cousins that were gay, two cousins that were gay. Okay. So in that era, it wasn't very easy for them. Um, but I wanted to, I didn't want to listen to what the government in this country was saying. I wanted to find out why men were rioting on the streets and and what was going on. So I, I started to look into the gay culture then and learn a lot. Amazing, amazing. But when I was looking at my son, so he's not, I don't know what sort of a guy he is. So I was watching a program about anything to do with, you know, the history of, of the gay culture I needed to know. And I thought, that's what he is. So he came home one day and I said, are you a bear? And he went, <laughs> mom and I said I've been watching something I said are you a bear and he went yes yeah. oh I, I love it I love it oh my god I love your approach <laughs> you know and I had to and he has taught me so much mm -hmm. so it's I think my life would have been duller without having a gay son William and I'll say every mother should have fun that's um, amazing he's taught me not just about the gay culture but you know, it's everything. He will ring me up and say, Mom, there's a song I think you'll like. Have a listen to it. Do you like this? He took me to Manchester with him. You know, he taught me about drag drag race. He taught me about all sorts and opened my world up. Um, and he's got, obviously, all of his friends are amazing. He's, he's a great group of friends. And I always say, I'm camp. I'm camper than Christmas. So, <laughs> you know, and I will, I won't go anywhere without my makeup on. I won't even go to the bin without my makeup on, William. I won't put the rubbish out without. <laughs> I've always said, if I would have been a man, I think I would have been a drag queen. <laughs> I love all of that. Love oh. it all. You know, oh my God, I'm, I'm getting emotional now you're saying that, uh, Carol, because it's such a beautiful thing, you know, to to see a mom saying something like that about their, a gay son, because you, as you know, it's not everyone who accept that, mm -hmm. every parent, you know, for, for different reasons. And I love when you say what you just said, that every mom should have a gay son. My God, that's powerful what you just said right now. And I think it's such a such a beautiful thing because, and actually talking to you now, I think you you meant to have a gay son because oh, you, are, you, said you, are, you are very open-minded, you are fabulous, you have this about the makeup as well. I think gay guys, they love you know, to see, you know, women like well-dressed or with this beautiful approach. So I think Stuart is very, very lucky to have you for sure. I'm sure he knows that. Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next question is, when have you been the most happy? Christmas is always my happy time. So when they were little, I couldn't mm -hmm. afford a lot for them. So I would always make Christmas the most special time. Um, and it goes on from Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day. And William, they all move in to my home and they don't go home for a couple of days. And that's the time when we're all together. Grandchildren, children, 
and we just laugh and have fun. And so I am always at my happiest when I'm with family. Mm -hmm. And I have been blessed to have that love all my life. Um, and it's always better to have love than it is to have anything else. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm always happy when I'm with family. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Last question, ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Last question. But before the last question, Carol, um, you know, through your career as a mental health a nurse, tell me a situation. I'm sure you have a lot, but there is a situation or a moment that for you, you're always going to remember, always going to have a special place in your heart if you can share. Yeah. So I was looking after a married couple and I was a, I was a ward manager at, in a hospital at the time and the both of them had dementia. And they thought they were in a hotel. So as the oh. ward manager, as the ward manager, I would always do breakfast for all of the patients because it would give me an eye, a way of, of seeing how everyone was. <laughs> and so I went up to the table, you know, and I was giving them their breakfast and she went to her husband, she went, she's a lovely waitress, this one. She said, you never give her any money. And he was looking in his pocket and he was going, I haven't got any money. Oh. And she said, oh, you're so miserable. You don't have a tip anyone. And I was going, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> but I didn't disillusion them because they were happy thinking they were on holiday oh. in the hotel. And they oh. will always have a special place in my mind because it was the sweetest moment, you know. Oh, oh that's <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Last question for you is, what would be the title of your memoir? She did it with style. Of course. <laughs> in a big style for sure. In a big style for sure. <laughs> Amazing, Carol. I love it. All right, it's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? Let's start with money. Not important. Okay. Fear. Makes you better. Family. Best thing in the world. Life. For living. Love. For getting and keeping. Amazing. Religion. For me, important. Okay. Well, Sex. Uh, yeah. But Carry can on. cause wars. Absolutely. There are a lot of controversy regarding politics. Absolutely. Sorry, religion. Um, sex. Can't remember. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Politics. <laughs> oh, for it's important, but boring. Okay. French friendship. Um, really, 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 really important. Desire. Um, desire is necessary. Okay. Regret. Don't regret. Success. Is earned. Wow. Wish. Always wish. Happiness. Best thing in the world. One word for England. My home. And the last one now. Mental health nurse. One word. Mad as a bag of frogs. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pretend now I'm going to meet all your siblings together, yeah, and I'm going to ask them. Define Carol in one positive word and one negative word only. What they would say? Positive would be loving. Negative would probably be bossy. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to meet your three kids, Nay, Stuart, and the other two together. Do you think they would say the same answer if I would ask them? Um, they would probably just, uh, positive would say, um, wonderful mother, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Negative would be making speeches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> 
Let's play now, Carol in the magic box, and you can ask me a question. But before you ask the question, back to the word association game, one word, one word for singing, for music. Best thing in the world. Life-giving force. Amazing. It's not world, William, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> you can ask me a question now, Carol. Right, I thought about this. And obviously with what I've done as a career, so what I wanted to ask was, there are times in your life when a profound realisation comes to you and you change, drastically change. Has that happened to you? Oh my God, what a lovely question, Carol. Oh my God, I have over a thousand interviews on the show and nobody asked me that. Wow, what a question. You put me right in the spot. You know what? Uh, let me, you know, I, okay, you know, I'm going to say based on my personal life. I'm originally from Brazil, yeah? And I left Brazil um, when I was 19 years old on my own, yeah? All the way to Portugal, yeah? And I think, um, you know, that was a drastically uh, change in my life because, first of all, you are 19 years old, my goodness, you, 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 you think you have a lot of knowledge, but you have no knowledge at all. I, I think that um, back in Brazil, um, you know, I was living alone already one year before I left Brazil, I was um, studying to go to university, I was already living on my own. However, my parents, they were like uh, two hours by, by car, uh, you know, the same, near where I used to live. So there was always a plan B for me, yes, yeah? so I knew that whatever would happen to me, whatever I needed, I knew that two hours uh, away, I could find comfort, I could find help somehow. When I got the plane all the way from Brazil to Portugal, the plan B didn't exist anymore. And I just realized when I arrived there and I was like, okay, now, you know, here I'm alone now. There are no plan B anymore. So I would say that was a big change of my life, even if I didn't want to, but I mean, in the end, I want that because I want to change my life. I want to improve myself. I want to help my family back in Brazil. However, you know, when you face it, when you are there, trust me, that when you realize that there was no plan B anymore, it's just about plan A. So I'm so grateful, Carol, that uh, this, you know, this um, the life intro introduced this opportunity for me. You know what I mean? Because I think when I look back, I think it was necessary to build the person I am right now. And I'm so grateful for that. So I would say that I need to adjust myself to a new culture. Yeah. The, the same language, but in a totally different way. My goodness, I never thought that the Portuguese from Portugal would be so different that, you know, back in Brazil. So I need to adapt myself to a new culture, a new country, a new language, let's say, you know, a new way of living. You know, so for me, it was, everything was new for me. Everything was changed. But I must say, I've been the luckiest person in the world because, you know, the universe or God always protect me somehow that beautiful people cross my mind, my life. You know what I mean? When I look back, Carol, I call those friends angels because, yeah. you know, I, I couldn't make it without them. So I, that's, I would be, that would be my answer for sure. You know what I mean? That's the, the drastic change that I need to face it. And I'm grateful that I did. And um, I'll do everything again because, you know, I loved it uh, with up and downs, of course. Yeah. But I think that was the, the, let's say the biggest challenge or the biggest, you know, challenge that's, you know, been presented to me that made me build myself. Um, you know, I think living alone and uh, when you don't have your family and friends around you, trust me, it is, um, you know, something to to learn, something to understand that life is a totally different life when you, you don't have your loved ones around you. For sure, that will be my answer for you. <laughs> That's a wonderful answer. I was Thank hoping you you'd say that, actually, because I just thought, I obviously, I didn't know initially where you were from, but I know that you're not from here. Uh -huh. And I've met a lot of people who have had to leave a country and just come. Yeah. I think it's Absolutely. amazing how brave. Well Absolutely. done. Absolutely. And I think so. I think I've... Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I, I believe that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, those people, you know, those, uh, let's say, opportunities are presented to you, you know, and sometimes you just need to take it and, you know, for yeah. the best. 
uh, I'm great. I'm I'm so grateful for this opportunity in my life. That's uh, and I'm meant to be in London. When I look back, Carol, I meant to be here because. I yeah. feel the best. I've been most of my life here in England, actually, in London. I meant to be here because growing up back in Brazil, I had a dream. I was studying English when I was a teenager, and I always had a dream to live in a country where I could speak English every single day. So I live a dream. Absolutely. <laughs> Did you enjoy the interview, Carol? It. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks again for being so open and so nice and accept my invitation. And I'm going to say again, Stewart is very lucky to have you as a mom because it's um, you know when he was talking about you during the interview I could I, I could feel that he was genuine but talking to you right now it's it proved to me and I think I, I wish every mom they could see the same way as you do you know their son not just being gay but you know being let's say different in the society's um, eyes because it, it it's it, it can be a can give a big impact in our lives when you know we have our parents, you know, supporting us somehow the way we just are. That's for sure. Thanks so much. Thank you. Before you go, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. So I'll always say this, be as, be as happy as you can be every day. If, be as kind as you can be every day. Send good karma out into the world and it will come back to you at some point. Amazing. I hope to see you one day again. I need to organize with Stuart one day to see you, to meet you for a drink for sure. I'm oh, yeah, definitely. Drink. We didn't pop down to London. I, yes, when you come to London, when I go to Manchester, <laughs> where are we going to organize for sure? Actually, yeah. where he lives in Stock, uh, Stock on Trent, where he yeah. lives. Yeah. I've been there. I told you, I've been there a long time ago. I sent him a picture when I was there um, a few years ago, and I couldn't believe because I've been there a, a long ago, and uh, it was amazing. Thank but you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. You too. Bye, William. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com, and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye. See you next time.